Hello everyone. Welcome to my talk on Hello Espresso. Start with Android gray box automation. Let's get started. What will we cover as part of this tutorial? We will look over what Espresso is, what, how is it better or what kind of problems we can solve with it when we compare it with some other frameworks. We'll look at what is an Espresso test? How is it structured? And then we will start to dive into how to automate common Android components like lists, intents. We'll understand what is this thing called as idling resources. And what do we mean when we look at automating web views? We have lots to cover and a lot of fun along the way. So hopefully you will find this section as engaging and fun as I found it when I started to learn about this. Again, a bit of logistics around the talk. So naturally the question is, where can I find the code for this? Um, it's all on GitHub. So if you go to automation hacks slash testing samples, you would be able to find all the applications and the test code that we'll be using. Uh, the testing samples is actually a repository from Google. I have forked it into my own repo to make it a bit more deterministic but you can feel free to check out the main repo. It's constantly updated with every version of Android. They actually run these tests whenever they are looking to launch a new version of Android or Espresso. If you prefer to read blogs, uh, I do happen to have written uh, blogs on this topic. So you can go to automationhacks.io and just search for Espresso. You should be able to find these five blogs that I've written on the topic. Uh, these blogs cover the same content with some more background, but we will cover most of it in this tutorial. Um, going forward, if you want to just search for Espresso related blogs, you can go on the site, go to posts by tag and just search for Espresso as well. Wonderful. So now with all of that out of the way, we can go right into what Espresso is and dive deep into it. Naturally, whenever we are learning a new framework, we have to understand what it is. So for people who are new to it, it's a UI automation library. It's primarily for Android. It is made by Google and Google engineers are some of the engineers who are contributing to it, but it is open source. So it's, it's wide open and uh, there are other engineers as well who are spending their time submitting patches adding new features and whatnot. It's unique in that it offers both black box as well as white box support for Android automation. We'll see some examples of what it means, but essentially if you want to use it as a black box automation library, you can. Uh, but if you want to also make use of Android internals, it has support for that. Uh, you have access to Android instrumentation, which is great. We'll see some examples of it in further sections. But before we go actually into it, I want to create some motivation for it, for why, why Espresso and why not a different framework, right? So naturally, any complex problem in software engineering, uh, if, if I put this question right, you, you are always or in most cases you will say it depends on the context. And of course, this is also context driven. Uh, Espresso has some really neat features and has some trade-offs like any other framework, right? So it has a really nice, easy and concise API. We will see examples of what it means. Uh, these tests run really fast and it auto magically waits in most of the cases. In some cases, they do need a bit of help and we will see that in idling resources. The tests are really close to your application code base. And this, in my opinion, is a big advantage because your developers can see the application code and the test code right side by side. So as soon as this change a view or a component, it's very easy for them to get local feedback uh, right in their editor and they can just quickly uh, you know, fix the test and whatnot. It has very low barrier, uh, very less friction for them to actually write tests. And coming to my next point, it 
you can actually write tests in Kotlin and Java, which is the language in which Android development is primarily done, which is again wonderful. And lastly, it is maintained by Google. It is open source and has a great, uh, well-maintained documentation, good community support. So you can be rest assured that this framework will live. It will keep on getting patches. And so if you invest in it, you are probably in safe hands. Awesome. That's that out of the way, we can just understand a bit about the technical implementation now. So let's understand how to set it up. So, so Espresso is primarily written in the same repository in which you have your Android app code base. Um, in most of the cases, most Android apps use Gradle as a build tool. So you can just specify Espresso core as an Android test implementation. You can specify the version of it, which makes sense, either an alpha version or the stable version. Additionally, we also add the test runner and some rules, and we'll see some examples of this, but that's about it. Uh, we need to add this in the apps build.gradle. Uh, notice that in Android, you have a couple of build.gradles at the root and the app level. So this needs to go into the apps build.gradle. Next, we also need to specify that we'll use Android JUnit runner for these examples. So we need to add this as an instrumentation runner. How you do it is you add it in the default config section in your build.gradle. So, and I'll show you this in the actual file in just a moment, but within Android, you can specify test instrumentation runner and specify this class, which specifies Android JUnit runner as the preferred choice that we are going to use. So now we can just take a look at uh, what is an actual Espresso test made of, right? What are the nuts and bolts? What are the basic API? I know I've been saying it has a nice concise API. So it's about time we take a look at some example of it. So if when you hear Espresso, you'll see some common terms flying around. You'll hear matcher, you'll see action and assertion. Uh, some of them might seem familiar or might not, but don't worry, we'll, we'll understand what it means in just a moment. So when you take a look at any typical Espresso test, it has three main parts. There is an on view or a section where you actually find the element you want to do some action on you perform some action on it. And then finally you check what happened to my app. Is it in the desired state or not? So I described three main parts, right? You find an element, you perform an action and you check. So let's take a look at the finding the element part. So in Espresso, when you have to find any element in a view, you typically use the on view method and it expects a method in the view matcher class. So view matcher is basically a Hamcrest matcher. If you're not familiar with Hamcrest matchers, don't worry. We will see uh, some examples of it in further sections and I'll share some links that you can read later on to understand the syntax. Uh, it's a very powerful way of specifying conditions based on which you want to find elements. Once you have found the element, you want to obviously perform some action on it. So you specify methods from the view action class, something like click, send, type text and stuff. We will see some examples of it. And once you have found it, you naturally want to just check, is my application in the desired state or did a new element show up with a certain property? So you use the check method and you pass methods from the view assertion class. So let's see an actual example of this. So this is how your actual test looks like. So you have the on view method and let's say I want to find a view with an ID my view. So you have, uh, you specify the width ID matcher and you specify r.id.myView. r.id is an Android syntax uh, to find any element from your resource classes. So if you, if we'll see, if you type it in Android studio, you'll be able to find elements uh, this way. Next, here we'll perform a simple click. So we pass a click method. And finally, we want to see that, okay, is this element now displayed? So you use the matches and you pass certain actions or properties that you want to assert. 
So I know we have been talking about theory, but it always makes sense to take a look at the application. So, so let's understand the application first. And I think it would be better if I just show you in code. So let's take a look at the application. So I've launched the basic sample application. You will find uh, the code for it in the testing samples. Um, if you are opening it for the first time, just open the build.gradle file in Android Studio and you'll come to a screen like this. You can see I have the Espresso core already mentioned here and, and we have some additional dependencies. Of course, feel free to use the same structure. Uh, we have like specified the versions of these libraries in just build.gradle. So we are using Espresso version 3.5. And we also have the instrumentation specified. Yeah, we can see that within Android, uh, under default config, we have the test instrumentation runner specified. So perfect. Let's run this application and understand the flow that we want to automate. So I'll just run this app directly. And I have an emulator pre-created, uh, but if you are not familiar with it, the tutorial is fairly simple. Um, you can go to emulator and, and create a new one. If anyone has any problems, just let me know. I'll, I can like discuss about it in the end as well. So here you have a simple view at hand or a single activity. So this activity has a simple edit text. Um, and if I, let's say type something here, let's say I say selenium conf and I click on change text, you can see the text changes in this um, text view. Uh, one other flow is you can type the text, you can click on open activity and it will open a new activity with the text that we just typed. So what we want to automate is I want to launch this particular screen on the application. I want to type some text, enter, click on this button and then see that the text changes to what I'm expecting, right? So let's see a test for just that. But before we do it, we want to also understand a bit about the test structure. So let's see that quickly. So this, we just described the flow that we want to verify. You want to make sure that you are able to launch the screen you want to test, right? And for that, we use a JUnit rule and we specify uh, the actual class of the activity that we want to launch. So in this case, it's main activity. And I'll show you how we figured out that this is the activity as well. But for now, just understand the syntax. So you specify an activity scenario rule and you specify the name of the class that you want to launch. So I've created a variable with activity scenario rule. I've created a new instance of it and I've passed main activity dot class, right? So yeah, the, these are the three main important things. Uh, as to test more activities, you will have to change uh, these. Next, of course, we want to find the element. So this syntax should now start to look a bit familiar. You use with ID and we try to find um, the text box. Next, we want to type some text. So we use the type text method and we give it some text that we want it to enter on that. And once it's done, we want to also close the keyboard. So here you can see that we can give multiple actions in the perform method which is great. So you can chain some actions together. And lastly, we want to check that, hey, is it matching the text that I'm expecting? So we use check matches and we use the with text method and specify that string that we are expecting. So let's see this in our actual test. I'll just collapse this emulator and let me show you the actual test. So if you see the test, this is how it looks like. These are all the dependencies. Don't worry, we will understand what they are in, in, in a while. But you start with writing, of course, a class and you annotate it with Android JUnit 4.class. We use the run with annotation to let Android know that, hey, this is a test class that we want to use. Next. As I showed you, we use the JUnit rule, which creates an activity scenario rule with the main activity. 
So one way of finding the activity is of course to take a look at the app source code. So you can see basic sample, main activity, and this could give you a hint that, okay, this is one activity that we are looking at. If you are an Android developer, this is all very clear to you. So now how does my test look like? So of course I annotate it with add test to indicate that this is something I can run. And then I specify on view, right? So within on view, we have with ID, r.id, edit text, user input. Naturally, the next question is how do I figure out this ID, right? So luckily Android Studio has a layout inspector. You can open it with going to tools, layout inspector, and it should bring up an inspector similar to most of the other element inspectors, uh, like Appium has it as well. So as you can see, it launches my application, which is already running in the emulator. You can specify which specific activity you want to uh, basically inspect, or you can stop the inspector. It has a bunch of other controls for you to look at. But the most important is you can see your actual application. You can see the different elements if you hover over it. So let's say I want to see, okay, what is this text? What is this edit text look like? So I can see like everything is under a linear layout. I have a text view as a label. I have a text box where I can enter some text. I have a change text button and an activity change text button. You can see like the ID of these elements is mentioned here and you can also scroll a bit further and see some more attributes like this is the actual ID. Uh, what is the text for this element? Then what are its layout properties? Uh, what are its active uh, accessibility properties? Is it clickable? Is it visible and stuff? So if you are writing a test and you want to check a specific aspect of it, you can very easily find the property and use the layout inspector to understand it. This is just great. So now in our case, we wanted to actually write something in this text box, click on it and check the label, right? So we can find the IDs of it from here. Let me just collapse this. You can even just use the autocomplete and, and find the element, right? Which is great. You don't need to do any additional activity to find your elements. Next, we want to perform some action on it. So of course we use type text and you can click on type text and you can see that these are all methods of view actions.java. So in case you want to understand what other methods you have, you can you we can open structure and you can see all the different actions or the view actions that Espresso has available for it. Every, any action that you take a look at has good documentation. So you can just read through it and try to use it. If this is also not clear, Espresso docs are pretty self-explanatory for us to understand. I stored the text that I want to enter as a constant here. And I also instruct that I want to close the keyboard once I'm done typing to make sure that no other elements are overlapping. This is usually a good practice. Uh, finally, once I perform this action, I want to click on the button. So again, I start with on view with ID, uh, specify change text button and then click, right? And naturally, once I'm done with this, I want to, of course, verify that the text changed. So again, I start with on view. I specify with ID, uh, with the labels ID. And then I call the check method on it and check that, hey, it should match the text that I'm looking for. So you can see I use matches. And within matches, I can specify either one or multiple assertions. So I can go to with text. And you can see this is view matchers class, which has a bunch of matchers already defined for us. In case you want to specify a custom matcher for your use cases, Espresso API is flexible and you can do that as well. So this is great. Let's just run the test and see if it works. So I'll just run this. So it opens our app, types the text and closes. You can see the entire test executed just within two seconds, which is wonderful. Um, so if you remember, I also showed you another flow in this application wherein you can enter some text and click on the second button and it opens a different activity. Uh, I have a test for that as well. So 
For the most part, the first part remains same. You enter some text, but you click on a different button. And then you want to check that the text is present on the different activity. In this case, if you have launched a new activity, you don't need to tell Espresso what that new activity is. It will be able to find it on the screen. So you just specify, okay, I want to find the show text view uh, element and I want to check that the text is updated based on what I said. So this is great. Hooray, we have written our first espresso test.